All right, 33ers, I'm back from a short break. I literally got back from Mexico last night and I was itching to do a video. Today we're talking Rush, Judas Priest, and tons more. All that and more coming up on, coming up on Friday Night Vinyl. I'm Rusty, I'm Rusty. <laughs> All right, so I haven't done a video in a few weeks. It's been a few weeks, took some downtime, some R&R. &R. For a week of the downtime, my family and I went to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, it was a kid's spring break. We, had, we actually hadn't gone on a significant trip since before COVID. And uh, it was good, it was good. One of the things I brought with me was the uh, Getty Lee's uh, biography, Autobi autobiography. It's tongue tied, I got tequila going through my veins still. I don't know. Anyways, reading this on the plane and I read it throughout the week and I actually finished this book in a week. My F in Life by, uh, by Getty Lee. I love this book, man, I love it. I gotta say, I am not the biggest Rush fan I appreciate Rush, and this book made me appreciate Rush and, and Getty Lee all that much more. As I, said, I love this book. Getty Lee comes across as a down-to-earth, fun person who overcame a lot of obstacles to become the rock star he is. I made some notes here. There were some surprises for me in this book, including how much Getty actually liked to, to party, smoked a lot of pot, that kind of stuff. For whatever reason, he always came across to me as like a straight-laced nerdy kind of guy, I guess, right? But no, he liked to party. There were a lot of touching parts in this book as well, including his bond with Alex. And of course, Neil Peart's retirement and eventual death. That was really sad. I often, I read a lot of musician autobiographies and I often skip the parts where they're talking about their childhood and whatnot. I generally don't find that interesting, but I couldn't stop reading about Getty's family and his and his upbringing. His family story, his family story is really amazing. Uh, his father was killed by the Nazis. His parents were Holocaust survivors. After World War II, the family moved to Canada, and Getty had you know all these conflicts going on, and there were certain expectations placed on him. But he chased his dreams, his music dreams become a rock star much to the dismay of his mom that was pretty cool so if you're looking for a good book to read and you're not even don't have to be you don't have to be a huge rush fan this book definitely worth reading as i said i couldn't put it down i'll probably have to give it a second read again one of these days i brought some other reading material with me to puerto vallarta as well including the stereophile magazine want to give a big shout out to a viewer and my friend Virgil. He's been watching this channel for a few years and we've been talking back and forth for a few years. And over Christmas, he surprised me with a one year subscription to a stereophile magazine. So I really dug this issue and I look forward to reading more of them. Virgil, thank you, man. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of people are talking about the new Judas Priest album. I ended up getting it on CD. Turns out this is the Target exclusive, but we don't have Target in Canada. I ordered this through Amazon, the exclusive hardcover through Amazon. It actually was the Target edition, which is weird. It's basically like a hardcover book. It's got the lyrics inside, the CD, of course, and it's got uh, a few bonus tracks. That's because I was kind of hesitating to review this CD on the channel for a couple of reasons. Most of that being personal bias. Priest are, were, are one of my favorite bands of all time, but particularly or specifically my favorite era is that sort of 77 to 84, like Stained Class to Defenders of the Faith. To me, all of those albums are stone cold classic and some of them are, to me, in my opinion, nearly perfect albums. So I have that bias anytime there's a new Jewish Priest product, right? They're a great band. I was also somewhat biased because this album is getting such great reviews. It's ringing so many like nine on 10 reviews. So my expectations were, were really high. So I listened to this on the plane a couple times going down to Mexico and once coming back 
And I gotta say, I don't love this album as much as a lot of people do. I like it, but I, I don't love it. So I know a lot of people now have got their fingers on the thumbs down, getting ready to thumbs down me, but hear me out. I mean, to me, the album's called Invincible Shield, right? Invincible Shield, by the way. I hear my brain scrambled. I think it has its moments of brilliance. There are some great songs, but to me, there are too many songs that kind of blend into one another. There's a lot of great riffs, but after a while, to my mind, this is just me, a lot of those riffs are repetitive. They tend to sound the same. My favorite tracks, Panic Attack, Crown of, Th Crown of Horns. I also want to say Crown of Thorns. Crown of Horns and Gates of Hell. But I find other tracks just forgettable or not as good, including The Lodger. The Lodger, to me, ranks with, like, Loch Ness. Not a great pre-song. Sons of Thunder, didn't dig that. Overall, I prefer Firepower, the album that came out prior to this one. I prefer Firepower to Invincible Shield. That said, I like this album better than Redeemer Souls, Nostradamus, and Angel of Retribution. So overall, as I said, I like it, but I don't love it. It's probably not going to get a ton of play here. There are way better Priest albums, but come on. New Judas Priest in 2024. I mean, can we ask for more than that? It's an okay album. For me, it's not a 9 on 10. I give it like a 6 on 10, a 6.5. Another interesting note about this. I'm really curious to... I would be really curious to know how much Glenn and Ian Hill actually played on this album. Because if you look at the credits, it's recorded primarily in three places. At a studio in... The drums were recorded at a studio in Tennessee which I think is where Scott Travis lives. Uh, it says, Guitars recorded at the Falcon's Nest in Nashville, Tennessee. That's Richie Faulkner's studio. And the vocals, it says, were recorded at a studio in Phoenix. And then it says, Additional recording in the UK. So I highly doubt that Glenn, in his condition, he has Parkinson's, was flying regularly to the US to record his parts. I'm not sure about Ian Hill. So if the, if the most of the album was recorded in Tennessee and Phoenix, I'm going to assume it's mostly Scott, Richie, and Rob. So again, I don't know how much Ian played on here. I don't know how much Glenn played on here. I don't hear a lot of Glenn going on. That's okay, though. That's okay. Priest still managed to pull off a pretty decent album. One more Mexican thing. I bought this at the Isla Kuale flea market. It's this flea market in Puerto Vallarta on the Kuale River. And there's skulls everywhere in Mexico. Even Walmart sells touristy skulls, and I imagine most of them are made in China. This one was pretty cool. This was made by this artist, or painted by this artist. And his name is uh, Humberto Lazaro. Humberto, I believe is how you say it. Anyway, it's kind of the yin and the yang of human existence, right? He's got the uh, good side, the bad side. This guy's got kind of the Alice Cooper eye going on there. I really like all these Mexican skulls and that whole Day of the Dead motif. I've been in Mexico a handful of times. I always come down with something like this, but uh, I wanted to give this artist a shout out because painted it by hand. He's got a whole bunch of these in his booth at the Koale flea market. So if you're ever in Puerto Vallarta, Puerto, Puerto Vallarta, uh, highly recommend you check out his uh, booth. Tons of cool stuff, tons of cool stuff. Channel 33 RPM. And no, he didn't pay me to say it. How much did I buy this for? I think I bought it for 400, 400 pesos, which is like $35 Canadian. I'm not sure what that is US, like 25 or 30 bucks, something like that. All right, I wanna give a shout out as well to Matt. He sent me an email with this picture of skeleton kiss or kiss uh, skeletons that he created. So very cool, Matt, keep up the good work. And uh, finally, I want to talk briefly about what I have coming up. It'll probably be next Friday, kind of another mailbag and music review segment. I, pro I say probably next Friday because I got to take another quick trip. I have to go to Toronto 
just for a couple days for some um, business stuff for a conference related to to my job so i'll see how all that plays out and how that affects my video production schedule march and april this year are crazy i had to take a couple weeks off to to recharge my batteries we went on a family trip and now i'm going on a business trip so it's pretty crazy but trying to get as much stuff in as i can i got more vinyl dents coming up tons i got tons of submissions for vinyl dens vinyl dens is a segment i do where i feature cool music rooms of from viewers right viewers send me in pictures and descriptions of their music rooms and i talk about them i got so many man i i don't know how i'm gonna get through all of them but it's a good problem to have so i'm gonna try to do one vinyl dens a month but that's still not enough to get through all of them i have unless i did like a half an hour episode of vinyl dens which i could but they actually take quite a bit of time to put together because i gotta anyway i won't get into it. they take quite a bit of time to put together so i usually only feature like six to eight rooms per episode um and that takes several hours to put together so i got more vinyl dance coming up i got more music review stuff coming up and these videos i've been doing recently on album covers i i did a bunch of videos on hidden messages and whatever on album covers those did really well now i've started a new series where i talk about album covers that resemble other famous album covers and those seem to have really taken off like some of them approaching 100,000 views so you guys definitely like those so i'll be doing more of those so yeah stay tuned for more mailback stuff more record reviews more vinyl dens and more videos on album covers plus tons more stuff always come up always trying to cook up good ideas because i do love doing these videos anyway see you soon all right 33 is good to be back what do you think of the new priest album let me know in the comments what have you been spinning let me know in the comments i'll be back again really soon until then keep on spinning <laughs>